What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, this is TWA Motorsports. And today, yes, we are going to be working on the Sonoma GT. Now I said a while back, um, actually I think when I showed you guys a lot of the original stuff on this truck. So when I first got it, I was kind of going over it and uh, then I made a video of me driving and whatnot. But I wanted to, uh, there's a couple things that have been bothering me about this. For one, uh, a majority of the time, well, first off, yeah, when, when it's parked under the lift, um, I generally have the Corvette up on top of the lift or something else on top of the lift, and I put this under the lift. The antenna, uh, <laughs> these GM antennas, you guys know how I feel about these long antennas. You gotta go way up here to catch it. Yeah, somewhere up in there. Anyway, I've taken this one off because a lot of times I park it under the lift. So we are going to be putting a short antenna on it today. You know, just a better looking one. I don't like the ones that are like just a little nub here or like the four inch. I'm more of like the seven inch antenna guy. I just, I don't want it taller than the truck, but I don't want it like super, super short here. So we're going to be doing that. But the other thing that bothers me is this radio. Um, like I said originally, look, back in the day, you would have went to your local stereo shop and you would have got an Alpine radio like this and you would have been, that's the business back in the day. And um, while it does work and there's no issues with it, it just, I don't like the look of it in this truck. So when I bought this truck, the guy gave me every single piece of original equipment that came on it. And so I'm hoping that the original radio still works. And that's what we are going to be doing today is we're gonna to attempt to put the original radio back in it. And we're gonna be testing something else out too because while I do like the aftermarket radios for the fact that you can, obviously this one's a CD player, it is not a, um, sorry, I thought I caught, it, I caught a dent. <laughs> anyway, it's not um, Bluetooth enabled, which kind of sucks. Um, a lot of times nowadays, you just use your phone to play music. And so that's what I do. So what I've got over here, other than a big mess with a bunch of parts that we're working on random projects, but I have the original radio, which I'm gonna clean up really well. And it's still in awesome shape. Got the old school um, tape deck. So I, I could get the tape with the cord, you know, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. I think uh, some of you guys on this channel are old enough to know about the tape with the cord on it. <laughs> but we're gonna try this guy. Uh, it's a wireless transmitter. It plugs into the cigarette lighter and gives you not only the ability to like charge other stuff, but it makes um, this Bluetooth. And I've had these in the past that are cheaper units. And this one's not much, I think it was like I don't know, maybe 20 bucks on Amazon, and I'll link it in the description down below, as well as the antenna that I'm gonna be using. But um, I just, I, I want something that I can move from car to car when I don't have a radio. Like if I don't wanna take the stock radio out, uh, the older I get, the more I am. If it doesn't fit the way I like for it to fit, I don't like it. So like these old school GM cars, um, like my uh, green truck, this white truck, the S10 here, um, the newer versions of like my green truck, they have the double den option. And so it doesn't bother me to replace um, a double den with a double den. But when you have to add these like pieces of plastic to pull it out of the dash or um, make it fit right, I just, that's not the look I'm going for. It's just, I, I just don't like that. And um, not that I'm a purist because this truck obviously with its lowered stance and the wheels and tires is not um, what, you know, a purist would like. Um, I just, I just like simplicity and I like the look of the factory setup. So today I'm gonna set you guys up on a tripod. We are going to take the old radio out and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because a lot of times back in the day there was a bunch of hack jobs as far as radio wiring and nothing against the owner of this. I don't know, he may have done it himself and chances are as, as good as this truck is, he probably didn't like hack off all the wiring. Um, we are going to attempt to put that radio back in it. So what I'm gonna do off camera, I'm gonna clean that radio up a little bit. Obviously it's real dusty and it's just been setting. And uh, then I'm gonna show you the process of taking it out. There's not really a whole lot to taking a radio out of one of these things. In fact, it's probably one of the easiest ones you would ever take out. But let me uh, get that other one cleaned up and then we'll set you guys up. Hopefully we can get some lighting in the truck and uh, let's get this thing swapped out. Let's get the old radio out. So glove box down, so you've got a screw here, here, and then we're gonna go ahead and take, holy cow, look at all that dust. We're gonna 
gonna clean that out too. And then there's another screw here. So there's only three and the rest holds in by a clip up top. We're gonna actually take this time. I have never detailed this truck, like my level of detail. So at some point I need to do that because there's a lot of dust. Nothing wrong with it, it's just dusty. And these are just Phillips. And be careful because a lot of times um, stuff isn't attached like it's supposed to be. Pull this guy out. And then we're gonna try to unhook our cigarette lighter. It looks like I may need a pair of pliers to do. Let me get lucky and unclip it here. There's just a clip that goes around the side. Now be careful because the center of this is hot and the other is a ground, so you could potentially blow a fuse. And it looks like they've put this in with a couple seven millimeters. So I'm gonna go grab the two seven millimeters and we'll get this out completely. Got these two sevens here. And I'm really hoping, guys, it looks like my bracketry on my old radio isn't there. So I don't know if they kind of put stuff together. I don't know. I might have to dig through some boxes to see if I've got everything to put the old radio back in. Because it doesn't have any brackets on the side, and it generally would. Well, the good news is. Some, it's not cut. There's an RCA, RCA, RCA. We've got the antenna here. There's not a lot of room in these old trucks. I'm going to see if I can reach back here and unplug it without. Let's see if I got anything else hooked up. It looks like the. So you've got a couple things back here. I'm assuming this probably goes to the CD changer. So we may have to pull up the carpet. I'm hoping not. That goes way back in there. Holy cow. Let's just see if we can get it unplugged, I guess. Not a lot of room in these older trucks like there is in the newer stuff where you can almost pull the radio out to the console. Think. There's one. There we got a little more room. I just want to be careful. You know, I don't want to scratch or break anything. Oh my gosh, seriously. All right, so they have hacked the harness here, which sucks. Can't find the plug. Yeah, there's a lot going on back here, that's for sure. This antenna, it already unplugs, like all mixed up in here. Just need to find how to unplug this because it has definitely been chopped. I can feel it now. It's probably been, there we go, it's been plugged in for 20 years. All right, so we're gonna have to feed some more wire out of here, I believe. I think this is, one of these is a CD changer plug. That's this guy. And I don't know what this is. Looks like something. You old school radio guys, let me know what this is. Looks like a subwoofer pre-out maybe, but it goes way down in the dash. What I'm hoping is that we didn't chop this up way down in the back. Got a bad feeling that that's the case. 
All right, I'm gonna do some exploring with some wires so I'm not yanking and just pulling stuff out. And then I'll let you guys know kind of what I find because you're not gonna be able to see down here in the dash. No good way I can hold it, but that's the plan. I'm hoping that this was an adapter that they hooked on somehow. And it may be, I'm gonna get a light in there. Nothing's ever easy. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a couple other pieces here. Uh, I may end up pulling the glove box out because when I'm just, I'm just gently pulling on some of these wires and they're not wanting to move. So we're gonna go ahead and take like the ashtray out, maybe give me a little more access, just another uh, small screw here and we'll get the light pushed out. Burned out anyway, we need a new light bulb. We'll get it out of the way and uh, Maybe we'll have a little more reach. It looks like they kind of tuck some wiring up under here. And they may not, they didn't cut the plug. What I'm seeing is the adapter. You can see down here, this guy, which is awesome. We're just gonna have to reroute it and feed it up back to the original radio. But this, I don't know what these are to, because generally like your pre-outs for your subs and stuff, um, I don't know what they've got going on there. I don't know where these go to. So I'm gonna have to pull a little more apart or get under the dash on the other side and see what's going on. So I wanted to show you guys something that was crazy. So I started pulling on some wires back here and check this out. This is what was plugged into the back of the radio I took out. But this is another one of these. So at some point it had a different radio in it. And uh, they've tied in, they've tapped in somewhere to some wire I'm not really even sure, so I'm hoping, um, we're, I'm probably gonna go ahead and unhook the battery at this point because we're getting to the point we're gonna have to chop some wires. This is not a factory wire here. And this is for um, some sort of aftermarket radio, I assume, uh, because it is literally the same exact aftermarket harness as this guy. Uh, so I'm not really sure this, this thing, so, it's had multiple radios, let's just say that. Uh, but that's, you know, like I said, that's when, when you don't do something, you're really at the mercy of somebody else that is. So uh, we may have to get a little deeper and see up under the dash, like what's going on there. I still haven't went on the other side here and figured out what's going on with this guy, but let's get this out of the way before it breaks. But I'm gonna have to, fish my hands down under, get under the dash here and see what's going on with this yellow and black wire. So I've installed a lot of stereos in my day, guys, um, but I've never seen anything quite like this. So that orange, or sorry, that yellow and black wire that you see right there that I said I couldn't, I, I was kind of tugging on it lightly. I don't want to unplug anything or screw anything up. So I pulled the panel, the kick panel out here, pulled the carpet back and look at this. It goes in through the firewall see right there where it's hooked right here it's going through the firewall and then it comes up front and it's a power source i've never seen anything like this before in my life it's got a ground they hook to a different wire here there's a ground here and then it hooks to that power panel right up top so i don't know if this was early alpine um, power for the maybe the amplifier within the unit I've never seen anything like this before. Never where there wasn't like a plug because generally you could pull your radio out and then you, you know, you can unhook it and you go, go back to the stock, but that's crazy. So I'm definitely going to unhook the battery and uh, we're going to undo all those connections under the hood and kind of pull that back through. And um, we should at that point have the old radio out of the way. Well, it keeps getting deeper. Um, I just took that protective panel off the bottom and now I can finally see, I got all the wires out from under the hood where they were hooked up, but look, there's a big old fuse there. That wouldn't have pulled through. So at this point now, hopefully this was sandwiched in between. And so I think we should be good at this point now to get this the rest of the way out of the way. Yeah, it's pretty loose now. So we can go ahead and get the radio out at least. Who'd have thought it had taken that much to get the radio out. But either way, I had to do that anyway because the CD changer, you can see this wire right here, at least that blue wire, that's part of the CD changer. So I was gonna have to take it loose in order to get to that anyway. 
So let's go ahead and uh, I'll thread all these wires out of here and hopefully we'll have the bad stuff or not the bad stuff, the, just the stuff I don't want out of the way. Now that we have all the wire out of the way, um, you know, I told you that this guy was aftermarket for like an aftermarket radio. It actually isn't. Uh, well, it is and it isn't. Um, this is a radio and I thought this radio looked kind of newer than what would have came in this truck originally. But what, what the deal is, is this is the plug-in for this radio. And so I took this out, um, you know, because I thought that it was an aftermarket because it looks, this looks like an aftermarket plug to me. But anyway, we, we need to put this back in and um, then the radio that I've got here plugs into it, which I do think this is a nicer radio, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug all this back together and then we're gonna hook up the battery and we'll just test it to make sure everything's good. But I kept getting, um, there was a random plug like this guy right here. I thought, man, what is this for? Because it wasn't plugged into anything. And it was somebody actually spent the time, I traced these wires over to the fuse block and they actually wrapped it in the factory loom. Uh, so whoever did this install on this portion did a pretty good job to be real honest with you. But we're gonna go ahead, plug everything in here, and we'll set the radio in. I did have to use the brackets that were came off the old radio uh, in order to get it put in the dash, hopefully. Uh, but we'll do this, and then we'll see if we can get it plugged in, and we'll test it to make sure everything works. Well, we've got it all plugged in, and so now I'm gonna hook the battery up and uh, just make sure that everything turns on before I go buttoning things back up together. So you guys are gonna to get to see it first test. See if it works, but the battery's plugged back in. Oh, we got a clock. Oh, power. Oh, it's working. I don't know, I don't know that we have all our speakers, but we've got, um, for sure got a working radio. So I'm gonna have to test the speakers. I'll do that off camera, but hey, it's lit up. Actually, every one of the speakers works. Uh, it's working like a charm. So we're gonna just button this back up, guys. I'm not even gonna show you that process because I'm gonna take my time and clean some pieces as I go back together. But I'm excited because this radio does look quite a bit nicer than what would have originally came in the factory. And like I said, I, I kind of thought that when I when I saw it in the box, I thought, I mean, that doesn't look like any factory S10 radio I've ever seen. It looks more like a Camaro or a Firebird radio, to be honest with you, but it works well. And uh, all the speakers seem to be working. So we're gonna go ahead and put this stuff back together and then we will move on. I think I'm gonna have to take the seat out here in order to get the wiring for the uh, CD changer out. But hey, that's part of it. I won't show you guys that, uh, just a couple bolts to lift at least the passenger seat up. But we'll move on to the um, antenna. And then at the end, once I've got it all cleaned up and put back together, we'll talk about that adapter that I've got uh, that works with the factory radio. Let's move on to the antenna now. And I've just got this one, this is the old one, screwed on really lightly so we need to take that one off and it's generally an eight millimeter if you're trying to take it off now the new antenna that i got that i'm going to link down below comes with several adapters so it fits like you know gm ford chrysler dodge just about everything sometimes you're lucky and this guy and we are it actually screws right on so we don't have to mess with any of the adapters which to be real honest with you, I like because if we use one of these adapters like this, um, it just, it spaces it up a little further. So if you're, if you're one of those type people that likes that, so like maybe this is too short for you, you can go ahead and you can thread this little stud on. I just don't really care for that look. Actually, that's not the right size this one is so you could put it on and then you'd have a standoff but I don't like that uh, piece on the bottom now on the let's say like the GMC like my Sierra 
um, there's a place that hides this, so it kind of, you know, it, you don't see that much of it. But on this, I was really hoping that I could find one that threaded right on, and this one does. So that looks a thousand times better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me some tape and put some blue like masking tape on that while I tighten it up. And the reason I'm doing that is I just don't want to scratch it. You can see here where um, the paint's missing on this one. Now, I actually don't know that that's from somebody taking it off as much as it is just wear and tear over the years. But man, do I have a stack of big GM antennas. I don't know why I keep them. I'm never gonna put them back on. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this one away because there's no sense in keeping stuff like this. But uh, I'll get some blue tape, and you guys have seen me do this in the past. Put some blue tape on there, go ahead and snug it down. And uh, then it'll fit under my lift without having to take the antenna off every time. And I know a lot of, I get a lot of questions about this too reception well guys i live about 30 miles 35 miles from the closest radio station and about 50 miles from another one and i can generally pick up the 50 mile um, range with this antenna so i've never had any issues with that on any of my vehicles i know that's a question that i get a lot when you go to a shorter antenna but um, pretty good design and the fact that it does still pick up those stations if you're not close to something so now that we've got that finished, let's move on to trying our new adapter that allows us to play our phone through the radio. I'm pretty excited about that because like I said, I have multiple cars that I don't want to change the radios out in. And then that gives me an option. I can just move it from car to car. So at this point, we've got everything back together. Um, I took some time and cleaned some spots that uh, normally I wouldn't clean. You also notice I'm in a different shirt because I am, it's so hot out here. So I'm on my second shirt, but how this guy comes, not a lot to it. Um, this is it here. And actually what it does is it plugs in to your cigarette lighter. So what I'm hoping is that this cigarette lighter works. I think it does, but it doesn't act like it's working guys. just tested the cigarette lighter and it worked. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna have to, there we go. It's not a real great connection. So you can see what it does is it tells you the voltage. It took me a little bit to get it plugged in here. But it tells you the voltage. You can turn to whatever channel you want it to come through on. So I'm not real sure what channel I have it on. It's 87.9. So let's see if we can find. So we got it on 87.9. And then you just go through and pair your phone to it. And we should have music. And we do. Pretty slick. So you have a couple different volume options too. So you have a volume obviously on your radio. You have the volume on your phone, but then this has a separate volume. And the other cool thing is it, it works as a microphone. So let's say you get a phone call, all the music um, will stop and then you're playing the person's voice through the speakers and this works as a mic. So kind of cool and then obviously you can change the station if you're closer to a station like if 87.9 was coming in um, as a station you can change it over to a different one you can set it on whatever you want uh, but I like this setup a lot better I think I think that uh, this will work better for you know like multiple trucks or cars that I don't want to change the radios in and whatnot and uh, I just think this looks a lot cleaner so definitely worth the money guys I think that, like I said I think it's like 25 bucks and I'll link it in the description down below but uh, for what I'm doing, uh, I don't want an aftermarket radio. I just think this looks a lot cleaner. At this point, guys, we are complete. Um, got the things finished that I wanted to. It took me a little longer, and I didn't show you guys that, but I'll show you here in just a second on the inside. But antenna, come on, that looks way better than that factory big antenna. I just, you know, I, I don't like that. You guys know that. And then as far as the radio goes, 
Uh, a little more cumbersome to replace than what I thought it was going to be just because I'm one of those guys, I can't just leave wires back there. If they don't look factory, I I trace them and find where they're going. I don't just like leaving stuff like that. So I like I said, I pulled a lot of stuff apart that I didn't show you um, just to see one wire and it was actually tied in with that other harness when I thought there was a, you know, a, two actual aftermarket harnesses. And, and technically there was because, like I said, this is not the original radio that would have came in this truck. But it does fit and look way nicer. So, um, and then, of course, this guy. Um, I will use this in so many vehicles. It will be ridiculous. I've had older versions of these. Um, one of the cool things about this, like I said, with the microphone, you can answer phone calls just by pushing this button here in the center. And then it's cheap, you know, 25 bucks, I think. And uh, it comes with two different chargers. It's got two, what, 2.4 amp and then a three. Um, so you can charge your phone at the same time. It didn't fit quite as well in the S10 as it does. Um, I actually went out and tried it in my other truck and it fits a lot nicer in there. Um, but this one, it looks like um, maybe you need to push it in just a little bit further in order to get it to, to connect. But either way, like I said, I will use that all the time. Uh, but anyway, oh, on the interior, to get the cord out that went to the original CD changer, um, I had to take this seat out, the other seat out, and then I just kind of cleaned on the carpet a little bit. I got a couple spots out. This isn't perfect, but I figured, you know, I had it out and what I had out and available, I vacuumed under the seats and stuff. You guys know how I am about, you know, you know, crap like that, dirt and whatnot. But I also um, used some, some of that dressing, that silk dressing on, you know, the bottom parts of the dash, the pieces I pulled out before I put them back in place. But this truck is just, it's so nice. And I really, like I said, nothing against the Alpine radio. It worked great. And, uh, but I just, I like this look better. I just think it looks nice on the inside, fits more, it's flush. And that's what I like. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Like always, guys, if you are not subscribed, please go down there and hit that subscribe button. If while you're doing that, you might as well flip that bell icon that makes sure you're notified every single time we both post a new video or in the community section. And then, of course, like always, guys, um, stay tuned to see what we get into next.